Welcome to Inland Empire Alive, bringing you issues, events, and perspectives from throughout Riverside and San Bernardino counties. I'm David Brady, and today I'll be talking with Terrence Stone, who for 21 years has been the CEO of an organization devoted to helping youth make positive choices. That's today on Inland Empire Alive. Joining me now is Terrence Stone, the founder, president, and CEO of Young Visionaries Youth Leadership Academy. Terrence, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, there's a lot I want to talk about about your personal journey and kind yes. of what led, led you to this work, but tell me a little bit about Young Vis Visionaries first. Let's start well, at the beginning. Well, Young Visionaries, we were founded in um, 2001, um, just doing gang intervention and prevention programs for kids, and basically because of my lifestyle or past lifestyle, that was really the only thing I knew. So over time, we learned how to put together positive youth development programs um, for kids and, and more structured programs over the years. So, uh, so in 21 years, we have about seven um, core-based programs. Through, we still do violence and gang intervention, um, leadership, life skills programs, uh, mental health programs, um, critical outreach and engagement programs, and things like that as well. Tell me about something you call the three E's. Talk to me about that. The three E's, oh, that's on the website. <laughs> Enrichment, empowerment, and um, oh, I forgot the last E. <laughs> well, just talk to me about the spirit behind it. I mean, what well, is the spirit of Young Visionaries? What, well, is, you know, what is the mission? What is, what is the purpose of what you well, do? Well, the purpose is to, is to just steer kids into the right direction. Kids and families as well, well too. So we do that through positive, um, positive programs, whether it be workforce development, um, getting people job skills, and, and not just job skills, but being able to um, connect them with jobs that they could um, have long-term employment as well, though, too. Also just um, giving kids um, vital leadership and development skills as well, though, too, so that they can be able to, to lead as leaders, but also be able to be great followers when you're, when you're going in the right direction as well, though, too. So we try to do that uh, with kids. We work with around 5,000 kids a year throughout the, um, San Bernardino County um, in, in getting these kids in the programs on the right track so that they can be successful. How are those kids uh, typically uh, referred to you? How do you intersect with them? How do they find out about the programs? Yeah. Well, we, um, we have a, a great community outreach and engagement team, but we also um, collaborate with our great school districts. We have some wonderful school districts in San Bernardino County that we work with throughout the county. And so um, we'll usually work with them, go on their campuses to work with the kids there. Now, you touched on this a couple minutes ago. This is very personal to you. This yes. comes from a very deeply personal place. Talk yes. to me about your own personal history and what led you to this path. Yeah. Well, myself growing up, I was second generation gang member. Um, my biological father, he overdosed on heroin when I was two years old. Um, and my mother remarried when I was around six. The person that she remarried um, was one of the founders of the neighborhood that I grew up in, basically. So just me and my younger brothers following in his footsteps um, um, forward us through gangs and the gang lifestyle and things like that. So just coming out of that, I had to turn into like a Harriet Tubman type of person and go back and see if I can bring as many kids and people out of that lifestyle as possible. So when we talk about gang intervention, uh -huh. we talk about offering kids alternatives. Alternatives to what? What was the appeal? of the gang for you? Was it a surrogate family? What was it giving you that you weren't finding in your yeah. life or in school or in your community? Yeah. What, what, what did you need that alternative for? Yeah, I think when you um, mentioned a surrogate family, it was just that. You know, it, it was um, everything that, that people outside of that, that sector or that lifestyle, they, you know, it's hard for them to understand. So I train people on just trying to understand that lifestyle as well too. But, but it's, it's all of that, it's that surrogate family, it's those people that, that, will, um, that you feel that will stand by you when no one else is standing by you. Um, it's people that will, um, I remember just being hungry, my mother worked all day, you know, those people um, that, um, that lived in the neighborhood, that was from the neighborhood, would make sure that me and my brothers had something to eat. They would make sure that we um, felt safe and things like that. So all of those, those things combined you know, in, in, a, in a young man or a young woman, you know, you will um, gravitate and also latch on to whatever's behind that lifestyle as well too. So it's quite a big leap to go from deciding to go straight mm -hmm. to starting a nonprofit. Right. With all of the, you know, work that that entails and yes. the people and the budget. So, 
you know, what was that seed that grew into Young Visionaries? I think, you know, the first thing is I, I had to change my lifestyle. So I started, um, you know, going to church. I started, I checked myself back into school, went to um, um, Chafee and Valley College. Um, and then later on went to Cal State Los Angeles as well too. But you know, when just in changing my, my program, basically it, it helped me to change my, my lifestyle. And that kept me out of trouble. It kept me away from people that I didn't need to be around and things like that. And, and also too, it helped me to build up the tolerance of not being around the people that you grew up with all your life, basically. And, and for them not to have that influence you know, sure. over your over your life. So so I had to build up that tolerance, too, so that when, you know, they come over or, or I see them in traffic or however I see them and, and time seem good, you know, make you don't want to feel like, man, I have to go back tomorrow because I love that feeling. So I had to um, rid myself of that. And, and I did that through through education, employment, work, two jobs um, at the time as well, too, and just stayed extremely busy until I and also working on a nonprofit as well, too. Um, and just trying to figure out like, what do you do? How do you build it? And, and, and how do you make it grow as well though too? So, so all those things combined, you know, help me to stay extremely busy. Why do you think it is that it, it, it wasn't enough to just yeah. turn your own life around? That right. you decided, I wanna give back. I wanna pay this forward. I wanna turn other lives around. What, what, what lit that fire? I think um, just, just knowing the, the outcome really, you know, of, of that lifestyle. I've been to probably hundreds of funerals mm -hmm. of, of young men and young women that were under the, under the age of 25. Um, and, and so, and knowing that they didn't have to go, they didn't have to die that, that young. Was it important to you to have walked the walk, you know, walked the talk that you have actually lived these experiences. You're not just speaking yeah. as someone, you're not just a motivational speaker who comes on and says, hey, you can be anything you want to be, yeah. that you lived this. Is that, was that important to you to be able to say, to have that authenticity? It most definitely, because um, I think that, um, that I, I can relate to where they come from, basically. So, so, so I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Um, you know, it's kind of just being stuck in a hole, but there's a tunnel and you know the way to the tunnel so you can show them like, hey, you can get out this tunnel if you go this way. Or you can get out this hole if you go this way. And, um, and how do you know? Because I just went down that same tunnel. You know, so I try to just use that and, and use myself and, and let them know that since I've been through it, I'm going to let you know the outcome of it so that you don't have to have to go through it. But I've also been through college. I've also been through um, running a successful business as well too. So I can also, also show you those things as well. So I try to show them both perspectives and let them make the choices that they feel that's best for their lives. Does that help overcome the, the, the cynicism that, oh, no one's gonna hire me. You know, I have a record. No yeah. one's going to ever give me a chance. I've got, you know, visible tattoos. Is it yeah. showing that, no, 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 there, there are paths. There are people that will give you a chance. There are people that will listen to you. Yeah, no, I, I most definitely try to push um, entrepreneurship, you know, to our young people. So if they say, hey, I want to, you know, be an auto mechanic. So I tell them like, you know what? Well, if you want to be an auto mechanic, just like think if you own the shop, right? And so, um, because a lot of these young people that we work with, they re they're really outside of the box thinkers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the problem is sometimes is that society, we try to stuff them into a box that they don't fit in. And so with that, that's why I always try to get, think outside the box. Let's stretch yourself because um, you can do and be whatever you want to do and be in life. Let's just figure out the path to get there and, and I'll push you down that path. So you've got now 21 years under your belt. Yes. How do you measure success after 21 years? I, I measure success um, based on the amount of lives that we've touched o over the years. Like we work with, um, you know, over 100, like, close to probably 150,000 um, kids and families throughout San Bernardino County. And just um, seeing them succeed, I, you know, and just seeing them just throughout the community and they're, and they're there, you know, um, now they're older, they have a wife and a kid and a nice car and, and you know, and they're so excited to see me when they're, when they're successful or, or doing good. Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone, look, you know, this is my wife, this is my kid and this is my car. And you know, and I'm just that big cheerleader, you know, I'm just applauding for them, letting them know that, that, you know, that man, I knew you can do it. And so, um, and so success to me is seeing other people succeed.
How have um, things changed in those 21 years in terms of the pressures on young yeah. people? Um, is it the same old issues, just in a different form, or are there new challenges, things like social media, you know, things that didn't exist in terms of you've got to conform, you've got to fit in, new ways to kind of harm people? Yeah, I, I think the, the main thing is social media. I, I didn't have social Positive media. Positive or negative? Um, well, both. Okay. Both. Um, I didn't have social media growing up, and I'm glad that I didn't because um, you can't get away from social media. When you turn on your phone, when you, you know, um, whatever is good on social media, you'll see it on the news, basically. And so um, even the, the bullying or the, the cyber bullying, yeah. um, you know, or even the gangs, you know, that's where they now can, you know, promote for free and things like that just on social media. So social media has, has impacted um, a lot of the, the lifestyles and things like that, even just throughout the pandemic. Um, when um, when the schools went back, there were a lot of schools that had a lot of fighting and all, a lot of those actions were um, set a fire through social media. And then they didn't forgot that, you know, when school opens up, I have to see this per this person in person, right. you know, and, and so um, and so just going to the schools and trying to settle those kids down and things like that so that the teachers um, can teach and do their jobs in the schools as well. So social media is is a, a large impact. Um, of, of our young people, like even I have grandkids now. They they are born into a social media, electronic type, mm -hmm. you know, in in society. You know, my grandkids touch my flat screen TV because they think <laughs> it's a giant laptop or a iPad. You know, um, but because they were born into that, you know, they, that's their lifestyle. How do you turn that cynicism into hope when you when you meet these folks? You know, just a positive message. You know, I. I um, this what keeps is, you positive? Um, what keeps me positive? Waking up every day, really. Just, just being able to be here. Just being able to um, interact with all different um, types of people um, throughout the community. Um, I, I tell people like I'll be, you know, in front of the liquor store talking to Bobo in front of the liquor store in the morning, and by the evening I'm talking to a congressman or, or having a meeting with them, but just being able to navigate through these different um, um, communities, trying to um, spread hope and let people know that, hey, man, you can do it. You know, you can, um, all you need is one great decision, you know, um, and that's to go the right way and you can do whatever you want to do. You touched on this a little bit earlier, but you mentioned there's a bit of a spiritual component in what yes. you do. Is that something that has made it, um, possible to do what you do um, like if it if you didn't have yeah. that well most that definitely I, I think um well young visionaries that came from the bible um in accident and in, in the old and new testament accident and joel said our old men will have dreams and our, our young men will have visions mm -hmm. and from that those two verses I, I got young visionaries um when i started off um i was a youth uh, minister um and, and starting off the, this program. So it, and so in working with kids, that was my first actual, um, not even a job, because I didn't get paid to do it, to, work, to working with kids. But in, in that, it, it helped me to build a, a foundation, basically, on how to interact with, with young people of all different lifestyles, with, with different problems, situations, trauma-informed care, and things like that. So, um, so, so I try to bring that into what we're doing now. And, and I'm blessed because we have, like, a, like it's not just me but we have a large staff of people that go out and, and just you know, tirelessly work with the kids and community every day. Well, you, you, you touched on uh, the next thing I was gonna ask. Young Visionaries, like many organizations, runs on donations. Yes, yes. Uh, not just funds, but also people's mm -hmm. time, people's effort. How, yeah. what are the, what, where is help most needed now and how can people give? Um, Help is most needed. Like we, we're still doing a lot of community events. Last year during COVID, we did 61 events um, throughout San Bernardino County and Los Angeles and Riverside County. Um, work with um, thousands and thousands of people. Um, so just helping to man those events. You know, we, we gave out um, probably close to $6 million worth of goods and products in 2021. Um, um, to, um, to communities, you know, we gave out food and household items and things like that. Um, at Christmas, we gave out like 15,000 toys to kids. Um, so just, you know, so we need all, we're, we're, we're consistently and constantly looking for donations. Yeah. Where can people find out more? Where can they go to learn more about the organization, what you do, how they can help? Yeah, well, they can go to our website. Um, that is um, www.yvyla-com. 
ie dot org. Okay. Um, and what's, if there's something you would say, if there's anything you could say about young visionaries that I haven't asked, you know, what is your message that if, if people didn't know about this organization, they're tuning in today, they're hearing about it for the first time, what's the one thing you want them to take away? That Young Visionaries is a true community-based organization. We're, we're in the communities, we're fighting for the communities, and we're looking for ways that we can better every community that, that we touch. So if you're looking for a great community-based organization that you know that will be in those trenches, that is um, not scared to go to the places that people don't go, um, you know, just contact us and, and help us out. You know, and we'll guide you there and we'll guide you out. Uh, and there's always a need for uh, folks to help out? Yes, yes. We have events coming up um, all year. We have all the way to, we have our schedule all the way up to January for oh, community wow. events. Okay. Um, to January 2023, and we'll end with um, um, a Dr. Margaret Hill. Um, it's all about the Children's Day. Um, we'll, we're going to start having that annually every January 23. So you mentioned that you know when you wake up in the morning, you know yes. you have this sort of fire to get going. When you lay your head down at night, how do you know that that day has been well spent? If I'm exhausted, <laughs> if I'm exhausted. Um, you know, and, and just, um, I, I wake up and, and go to sleep in, in a, on, on kind of mission mode to help, basically. Um, you know, when, when I go to bed, you know, if I'm exhausted, I know that, that I've been out there working and, and getting stuff done. And then I analyze my calendar. I live by my calendar. Um, if I've done everything that's, a, that's on my calendar and said that I was going to do whatever I told somebody I was going to do that day, then I know that I had a successful day today. Do you keep a to-do list? I keep a calendar, like, <laughs> so it, it's like my to-do list. I mean, with everything that's going on, how do you, how do you keep it all? How do you keep the, the energy up? Um, you know what? I just go. I drink a cup of coffee in the morning, and, and that lasts me throughout the day. And, you know, and I just go from, you know, from meeting to meeting to person to person, and whatever's on my calendar, I just tackle that. You know, I, I wish tell you my calendar. My calendar is crazy, you know, right now. But, um, but I love being in meetings. I love sitting down with people, and I just love making stuff happen in the community. Uh, last question, and this is a philosophical one. Yeah. Um, if you could go back and change mm -hmm. the course of your life and not have joined a gang, would you make that choice now? Because that would have changed the whole path of where you are now and all the success and all the impact you've had. Yeah, you know what? I. I would make that choice not to join gangs, you know, because that, that's not even a, a good choice to make, basically. But I, I, I wish I would still have the knowledge to be able to um, divert kids from gangs as well, too. But I would make the choice not to join gangs. Interesting. Terrence Stone, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do for the community. 21 years. Youth Visionaries, Youth Leadership Academy, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you, I appreciate you. Thank you.